Well, welcome back. This is Bruce McConnell, Locomotive Systems Training. We got some more air brake training for you. Uh, last time we got together, we talked about the equalizer reservoir circuit in the reduction position. We had actually taken that automatic brake valve from release and recharge and went all the way over to full service. And then we let equalizer reservoir vent out of the automatic brake valve first. Then we let brake pipe vent out of port Y of the automatic brake valve second. In that order. You got to make sure you get that. All right, so we're going to talk about air brake circuits, automatic brake circuit, release and recharge position. This is LSTV-043. All right, so let's take a look what we got here. Whoa, that changed things around a little bit, didn't it? Hmm. Well, let's take a look here and see what we got. Well, we still have the good old 2060 automatic brake valve. That's really important. See how he, this guy here controls everything. He is the boss. And you'll hear me talk about things from time to time about who the boss is and who's not the boss. Okay? It helps to get an understanding of who's really in control here and who has to do what as a result of that. Okay? 26F control valve consists of three components. Let's take a look at it. They are a pipe bracket. It's a great big cast iron chunk of metal that uh, uh, has a uh, 40 cubic volume reservoir inside of it that's designed to take break that brake pipe reduction air and get it out of that valve quickly as possible and just store it in that in that pipe bracket temporarily uh, so we can get a good clean brake application and the brake valve the service board will respond in kind accurately. We also have a 26F quick release valve that's used when an automatic brake application is, is applied and you as the engineer want to dissipate or get rid of that brake application. Okay. Also, we have a 26F service portion. That guy weighs approximately 90 pounds. He's a, that's the true definition of pumping iron. Let me tell you, we can change that out. All right, so the 26F control valve, ladies and gentlemen, consists of three components again, pipe bracket, quick release, and service portions. Now, affiliated with that are three tanks, auxiliary reservoir, control reservoir, and selector volume. Okay? All right, so let's take a peek here. Well, if you remember from the last video, we'd gone to full service. So let's take that action and take another step further. So I'm in the engineer seat and I, my automatic brake valve handle is over at full service. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that handle, I'm going to push it back all the way. And handle movement, ladies and gentlemen, is really, really important. Take that handle, don't tap it. If you're tapping it, stop. You're just confusing the control valve. Okay? That applies for the application portion as well as the release portion. You should always pull the handle. Solid, firm, never tap. If you're tapping it, those days need to be over because all you're doing, like I said, is confusing the control valve, specifically the service portion. Now, so we come back over here. Oh, look, we got a couple other players. We have a 2016 double check valve. Okay, also... In addition to the 2016 double check valve, we also have the J1616 relay valve, okay? So that's, like I said, the first thing we do is we go in and we find out who the players are. Remember, we want to keep this simple. We have a 26C automatic brake valve, that's one component. I have a 26F control valve, that's two components. I have a 2016 double check valve, that's three components. And I have a J1616 relay valve, that's four components. You mean to tell me that I only have four components, I still have one digit left on one hand? That's right. In its simplest form, there are one, two, three, four components that make up the 26L automatic brake circuit. So we're going to take all that mystery and just send it down the road. Let's do that. All right, so we have a 90 cubic inch volume reservoir and uh, that allows for proper application and release radiance of pipe 16. Okay. Um, I always negate the gauge and the brake cylinder because, yeah, they're air brake components, but they're not, they're not directly related to the input and output of the system. They're just responding to what the system is doing. Okay, so we're going to talk about this condition right here, right now, is the release and recharge position. Now you'll notice we're taking the automatic brake valve handle and going from full service. Okay, how do I know that? Because I had a 62 pound um, pressure in pipe 16. A couple things going on here at the same time. I would look at this and go, hmm, 
how do I get that? And how do the brakes get applied? Well, we're going to talk about that in a little bit down the road. But for now, let's just say that whenever I have purple air, I've got brakes applied. Okay? We'll talk about that, how we develop that in a later, in a future uh, video. All right, so we have brakes applied, but we want to move the handle back to release and recharge and get rid of that signal. We want this gauge to read zero. Okay, so how do we do that? First thing we do, we take the automatic brake valve handle and we go back from full service, which was full service, and we go all the way back to release and recharge. Boom, boom, boom. Can't move that handle any further more to the left. Okay? When it does that, the first thing that happens is brake pipe, this orange air, begins to increase back to 90. Remember, 90 pounds on a freight locomotive is, is designed to allow to give us two full brake applications, two full service brake applications, without having to go back and recharge brake pipe. Okay? So we're going to charge brake pipe begin by 90. And this control valve, ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice I have brake pipe. I'm going to step into the shot here for a second. You notice that brake pipe goes into the pipe bracket, into the quick release valve, back over to the pipe bracket, and into the service portion. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, brake pipe literally is the boss of that valve right there, of that service portion. Okay? So the signal that this service portion is looking for is what happens in this, in this pipe right here. When brake pipe goes up, brake cylinder pressure goes down. When brake pipe pressure goes down, brake cylinder pressure comes up. Kind of a teeter-totter effect. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do is over here in this control valve, we've had some things that were set up from the application that still exist. Uh, but when we, what we're going to do is we're going to have brake pipe increase first. And as it's increasing, we're going to take uh, control error and we're going to have it reduced to match brake pipe, which is coming up. And we'll talk about that. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, there we go. That's better. All right. A couple notes here that's going to help us out. In release, in release position, control error reduces the match existing brake pipe, which is increasing to 90, which I said right up here just a moment ago. Okay. Uh, the service valve moves down to open port 10, which is just an opening in the pipe bracket. Right here, port 10. Uh, to open port 10, exhausting pipe 16 signal air. All right, so let's stop right there for a second. Move the automatic brake valve handle. No more tapping. Those days are done. Automatic brake valve handle over to release and recharge. Boom. Good, clean, crisp signal. I started increasing brake pipe from 65 because we had full service reduction. It's going to go up to 90. We're going to do a couple of things in this control valve or service portion. Okay? Before we go any further, I do want to make mention, these three tanks, the auxiliary reservoir tank is a huge tank. It has 1,000 cubic inches of, of capacity. The control reservoir has 900 cubic inches of capacity. And the selector volume has 500 cubic inches of capacity. Now, all three of these tanks, when the automatic brake valve handle goes back to release and recharge and brake pipe gets up to 90, these three tanks will all charge from brake pipe pressure. So no matter what pressure they were at, they will charge once this is all set and done and the air brake system is fully charged. Brake pipe, as I said right here, brake pipe charge, aux res, control air, and selective valve, and there's the key. Up to 90 pounds in each tank. When each of those tanks is fully charged to 90 pounds, then that locomotive, ladies and gentlemen, is ready for a next brake application. Now, let's, well, oh, hey, look at this right here. You notice here, it says here, the up way top right hand corner, it says two and a half times reduction of brake pipe is magic. Magic, really? Yeah, magic. I put that in there to, number one, get you thinking about it. What do I mean by magic? Well, for every one pound of that brake pipe reduced when we move the handle into the application zone, this purple air, this pipe 16, went up two and a half times the reduction of each pound of brake pipe that dropped off. So here, let's say we went to full service, which is what we did in the last video. We reduced brake pipe down, well, we reduced the equalizing reservoir first 25 pounds, then we reduced brake pipe down to 25 pounds. Because we reduced brake pipe 25 pounds, following the magic up here, the two and a half to one, 
I do old, old school math because I'm not real good at math. I know 25 and 25 and 12 and a half is 62. But that's not right. Where's my half pound down here? Ah. Well, inside this service portion over here, ladies and gentlemen, is a little valve called a service brake cylinder limiting valve. And if I have a good strong charge of aux res up in this tank, I'll have pressure greater than 60, 62 pounds. But the limiting valve is set to only allow so, uh, somewhere between 55 and 62 pounds on most locomotives. There might be exceptions on a full service brake application. So this half pound got chopped off and remains inside that control valve. That's why you only see 62 pounds in this line right here. That's what the question mark was for. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. So again, to recap, first thing that happened was now I got main reservoir coming here, feeding this automatic brake valve. Brake pipe goes from 65 pounds back up to 90. It comes in and goes over, and the selector valve will charge back up to 90. The control volume will go into match existing brake pipe, and we'll talk about that later. It goes back up to 90. Aux reg charges back up to 90. When all three of those things are fully charged to 90, and this purple air, and that's the next step we're going to talk about, goes bye-bye, which is a technical term, then something magical is going to happen down here. So it's real simple. Automatic brake valve handle goes back to release and recharge. Main reservoir feeds. Brake pipe. Brake pipe increases in the control valve. All three of these tanks can charge back up to 90 PSI because 90 and 90 equalize this little spring and the pressure in pipe 16 will push that surface valve down. Open up the exhaust. I know it doesn't make any sense right now, but we'll talk about it later. And this purple signal will vent out of here, go up through the double check valve, up here into the automatic, or excuse me, into the control valve, up into here, come out and go out port 10. So once we deplete, or eliminate this purple signal, that signal, that piloting signal no longer sounds the J relay valve, I want to apply brakes. In fact, it's the opposite. He's saying, uh, the signal is gone. I need all of the air in the brake cylinders to leave now. So what will happen is when that, that purple signal goes bye-bye, all the air from all eight brake cylinders, including the gauge, will come up and it'll actually vent out the J1616 relay valve underneath the cab four. And that's that real loud that you're hearing under the cab floor, that's all that brake pipe air coming back. Oh gee, look, out the valve in which it was created. All right, let's go one more slide, let's take a peek. Ah, and here we go to finally, finally get to where we needed to be. Okay, with the automatic brake valve handle fully in release and recharge, with brake pipe, it did increase, right? We already talked about that, I'm gonna leave him alone. Uh, it did increase, all three tanks charge up to what? On a freight unit, 90 pounds. Okay, when we did that, these two air, the, the dark green, the control air, and the brake pipe cancel each other out. The purple air shoved that valve down. All the air that was in here, you can clearly see, is now what? Gone. All right, so when this piloting pressure goes up and out port 10, all that air, that brake cylinder air, has gone and exhausted out of the valve wind which it was created and brake cylinder finally goes to zero. So the only air that I have left here, ladies and gentlemen, in the release and recharge, in the recent, in, <laughs> easy for me to say, huh? In the release and recharge position, I have brake pipe air, going over the control valve, 90 pounds, ready to do some more work. Pipe 16 is vented to zero, there's nothing left, it all went out port 10. There's no brake cylinder left because it doesn't have a piloting signal from the control valve. Hmm. All those events occurred simply by moving the handle, the automatic brake valve handle, to whatever service position I was in, back to release and recharge. Uh, we're gonna, down the road, we're going to talk about charge time, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, that's really, really important to get a clear understanding of how that works so we get a proper functioning of our air brakes. Okay? All right, so without any further ado, let's take a peek. Once again, there's our automatic brake valve. And again, this valve initiates application and releases of both the locomotive brakes and the train brakes by controlling equalizing reservoir pressure, which results in controlling brake pipe air pressure increases or decreases. This guy is the boss, ladies and gentlemen, of the automatic brakes of the locomotive, tra trailing locomotive, and every car in that train. Okay? 
Here's our components again. There's that pipe bracket. I don't know if you can see it very well. It was a great big chunk of metal. It's got a whole bunch of pipes bolted to the bottom of it. This is the guy that has that 40 cubic inch volume reservoir built inside to rapidly get that brake pipe air out of the way. Uh, this is our 92 pound, approximately 92 pound uh, valve. It's what they call the service, 26 f service portion. There's on the bottom here is the service valve. Over here is the, tr the selector valve. And over here is what they call the release cap. Great. Down the road we'll be talking about that. Oh, and hiding back over here in this corner, ladies and gentlemen, a little bitty guy called a 26F quick release valve. That's a whole nother story. Okay? All right, this valve will use the automatic brake circuit. It consists of three components. The pipe bracket, 26F service portion, and the 26F quick release. Ladies and gentlemen, all three of those pieces all put together make up the 26F control valve. Okay? All right, double check valve. Remember we had one in there, it was a 2016 double check. This valve permits directional control of a device from two different air sources without interaction between the air source, whichever pressure is greater. A little valve right there. Yeah, really, really important. Okay, let's go to the next one. And the J relay valve, which we beat up quite a bit here. It's a responding type valve. It just sits there all day long and does absolutely nothing until it receives a piloting signal from either pipe 20 or pipe 16. Very robust valve, very reliable valve. We change it way too often in the industry. It's a responding valve type valve. It responds to an air signal from either the independent circuit, there it is, pipe 20, or an automatic circuit, pipe 16, that provides a large volume of air, main reservoir air, to the brake cylinders. Thus, di the diaphragm or diaphragms contained inside this valve determine the output of air to the brake cylinders. Okay? And of course, what is our goal of the entire air brake system? All the, all the, the valves, the components, the pieces, the parts, the air flows, everything is to get air to this cylinder right here. This component converts pneumatic energy, air pressure, into a mechanical action. Provides a retarding force to slow or stop the wheel, which in turn will stop the train. That's our final goal right there, ladies and gentlemen, is to get that piston to come out through uh, levers and beams and whatnot, through a brake head, bra brake shoe in the brake head, and that applies pressure against the wheel, and our locomotive and or train slows down or stops. That is the ultimate goal of the 26L air brake system. Okay? All right, so with that being said, I want you to go take a look at our website again if, you, if, you, if you're a first time viewer or you're, you're a uh, LST uh, regular. I think that's a good word being used. There's our website, www.lst-ca.com. Once again, the web address is www.lst-ca.com. Take a look, tell me what you think, and we'll see you soon. Thank you and have a safe day.